This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about the stock Riot blockchain. The ticker is R-I-O-T. If you're interested in learning how to make money in both bull and bear markets, or you just want to see what I'm trading or investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So I've been getting a lot of uh, questions about this, whether this is a good investment. I don't offer investment advice, but I'm just going to give you my two cents on what I'm seeing. Obviously, it has a great chart. It's moved from the $3 area to poking just above $10 per share in the last couple days. Unfortunately, there are red flags everywhere when you actually take a look at this company. So let me give you an idea of how I would approach a company like this. First thing you can do is look at a long-term chart of the stock. This is going back to 2003 when the company went public. We can see that it used to trade. There's obviously been, been some split adjustments. It used to trade up in the 3000s. Now it's trading at 10. Uh, something very bad happened in 2008 that the company has never recovered from. So if we dig a little bit deeper, if we look into a wiki article on it, it turns out that this was actually a biotech firm that had a, a uh, registered veterinary patent. So it had nothing to do with cryptocurrency, nothing to do with blockchain or Bitcoin. And they just decided to change their name in October of 2017. They changed it from Bioptics to Riot Blockchain. In the process, they got investigated by the SEC. The SEC was saying, you're a biotech company. Why did you stick blockchain into your uh, the name of your stock. We can scroll in and see what happened when they did uh, this announcement. The stock ran from uh, just a couple dollars a share all the way up to in the 40s. So a lot of people obviously got hurt. It's never really recovered back to that level. Now, uh, this is always a, a, a big red flag, obviously, when a company completely changes its business. If you're in the biotech industry or you're a biologist, you probably don't know anything about blockchain or cryptocurrencies. You'll, you'll find a lot of penny stocks that are like this. A penny stock is just any stock that trades under $5 a share or $10 a share. You find a lot of companies like this that try to go with whatever is hot at the time. This uh, Riot blockchain ended up getting in trouble for it. But let's be objective about it. This is a, uh, it's, it has a new business now. They In the process, they bought a bunch of other businesses as they changed their name. And so let's take a look at what they do. They seem to have two main parts. They have a Bitcoin mining operation. It looks like they also mine some Litecoin. And then they have a portfolio of investments in the crypto area, something called TestPay, which is uh, an escrow service for telecom carriers. And Verity provides cryptocurrency accounting. So we can talk about those later. Let's take a look at the financial statement. The first place to start usually is the income statement. We take a look at the revenue. It's moved up uh, slightly since 2018, sort of in the seven to eight million dollar range. These numbers are all expressed in thousands, and so you have to add three zeros. So revenue in the last 12 months of approximately eight million dollars. And then if we take scroll down and take a look at their actual net income, their net income is negative. They lost almost 20 million in 2017. They lost 58 million in 2018, and they lost uh, 20 million in 2019. The last 12 months, they've lost also about 20 million. So this is a company that, at least for the history I'm looking at, and certainly since it became a blockchain or Bitcoin company, has never made any money. Uh, at least based on the income statement. So then I usually like to look at the cash flow statement. Maybe there's something weird happening in the income statement. Uh, the cash flow statement looks just as bad. You have operating cash flow, cash flow from operations right here. It's been negative over the past uh, the past three years. And the free cash flow has been negative as well. So this is a company that basically hemorrhages cash every single year. So how do they how do they pay salaries? How do they keep buying new uh, Bitcoin miners? Well, what they basically do is they issue new stock. I'm looking here at the cash flow statement on Yahoo and we can see net common stock issuance. So they buy back stock perhaps, they issue stock, but the net amount is being issued. So they issued in the last 12 months they issued 50 million dollars worth of stock. The previous year 24 million dollars 
worth of stock. So this is a little bit what, like what Tesla looked like uh, for many years. They were issuing, um, they were issuing a lot of stock and debt. This company doesn't seem to issue a lot of debt. I don't think people want to lend to them, but they're issuing a lot of stock to pay their bills. So this is a company that doesn't really make money from its mining or its its investments, at least not yet. But it makes money by selling its own paper to investors and in the meanwhile lose in the in the meantime losing about 20 million dollars a year this is significant if we look at the market cap of the company because the market cap of the company is only 500 million here and it's losing it's a business that's losing about 20 million dollars a year on a market cap base of 500 million and as we said issuing stock to fund everything Let's take a closer look at some of the people they have advising them. So if we look at the board of directors, there's a guy named Jason Less, who looks like he just dumped uh, 505,000 shares. It's a little bit difficult to see the timing of this, it says, in the last two years, but he did sell it. He was a massive seller at $7.38 at $7 a share. And Benjamin, Benjamin Yee, also a seller in the $7 range, he sold almost a million shares of stock. So if you're buying the stock, you have to remember these are insiders who are dumping it, but maybe it's just a small percentage of their holdings. Jason Les, let's say he's sold a, about a half a million a half a million shares. Um, it looks like he is well known as a professional poker player. He does have a undergraduate degree in computer science, but it's a little bit beyond me why this guy, why you have a poker player needs to sit on the uh, the board of a blockchain company. It does say that he's been active in the industry as a miner. It does look like he's not super bullish himself on Riot blockchain since he just sold half a million shares. Let's see how many he has left. He only has left 283,000 shares. So he sold approximately, call it two thirds of his shares when he was able to. And the same thing goes for um, Benjamin Yi. Had, currently has uh, only 16,000 shares left, and he just sold almost a million shares. So these are insiders who do not believe in the company as a long-term investment. And as a poker player, I imagine Jason, uh, he's just uh, you know doing his normal his normal uh, his normal thing. Now, if we take a look at the short interest on this stock, we can see that it's highly shorted. Almost 20% of the short is is 20% uh, of the float, which is the shares that are freely avail available to trade. 20% of them are sold short, which is a very high number. If you get over 10%, it's already fairly high. And so what we're seeing here is a classic short squeeze. It's one thing to trade this as a trader and to try to benefit from it. The problem is that low price stocks like this, really anything below 20, tens to $20 a share, they tend to be much more volatile, they tend to be much more choppy, and they tend to be much more mean reverting, which means there's a real tendency for them to revert back to their long-term average. You can have a short squeeze, short squeeze can end fairly quickly, and then the stock can crash right back down, unless they're fundamentals that are supporting it. You have something like Tesla, where the fundamentals really changed, did very well. It was obviously run by, uh, Tesla run by a genius. It's not some company uh, not a scammy company that used to be a biotech company and then changed its name. Uh, it became a blockchain company. So for these reasons, I'm not a fan of, usually if a stock's under $10 a share, you should just completely ignore it unless you can read a 10K or a 10Q simply because uh, you can trade these. But again, there's a question of where do you actually put your stop loss? Liquidity can dry up. The bid for the stock can disappear. So it's a fairly dangerous type of stock to trade, even if you're going to do a trend following on it, simply because uh, lower price stocks tend to be more volatile and uh, liquidity can dry up at any time. I wanted to give the uh, company the benefit of the doubt. So before we go, I wanted to look into quickly um, what they are, are invested in and sort of their history of investing. If we take a look, if we go back to the income statement and we look at, um, let's see, operating expense, non-net operating interest. Okay, here we go. Other, um, let's see, special income charges right here of 
million. So if we take a look at that, we can go in here and we can look at type in impairment. I think it was. I'm just looking at the uh, the most recent uh, the most recent 10Q. And if we come down here, we will see that they had an investment in uh, a company called CoinSquare. They invested about 9.4 million. This looks like it's the same charge, and this turned out to be a fraudulent company that was manipulating its trading volume in 2018 and 2019. So as a result, they had to write down 100% of the value of their investment. And when you do this, it flows through to the balance sheet, to the uh, income statement, I'm sorry, it shows up right here as a special income charge. So really half of their loss, uh, they didn't really lose $20 million on their, their operating business. They lost about um, $11 million on their operating business, which is which is mining cryptocurrencies, and then the other 9.3 million was from having to write down this investment. Now, the only reason I point this out is simply because if a company does a lot of write downs of previous investments, it would lead you to believe that their current investments are not, uh, they're you know they're not very good investors in general. These don't look like great businesses to me. I would say the only reason to own Riot Blockchain for the long term would be if you're bullish on their investment portfolio on TestPay and Verity. And from what I can tell, since they just did this write down of, uh, of the coin company, they're not, they're, not very good, uh, they're not very good investors. If we take a look at their mining, uh, their mining revenue, that was the last thing I wanted to look at before we go. And we can see how much they've um, been making in the last 12 months. Let me see here. So for the three months ended, I wanted the last 12 months. Okay, so mining revenue for the last nine months ending in September 2020, mining revenue of 6.7 million. The cost of that revenue was 4.1 million. And that's the cost associated with it. Uh, it's probably uh, the fees. Let's see, it's the uh, direction co uh, direct production cost of the mining operations, including rent, utilities, but excluding depreciation, which are separately stated. And so as a result, you have all these ASIC miners, all these miners that they purchased, and these things lose value over time. And so you basically, if you're a miner, if you're a Bitcoin miner, you have to make more uh, from the sale of the Bitcoin that you mine than it costs you in electricity and new equipment. Here's an example where they're they're making they have revenue of 6.7 million, they're losing uh, 4.1 million, and that doesn't even include the depreciation of the machines. Now this makes sense because it appears that they're doing their mining operations in New York State, which probably does not have a very low cost of electricity. A lot of the Bitcoin miners are in play, in the U.S. or in places like Texas where you can get very cheap. Uh, either natural gas, uh, flaring energy, or wind energy, or lower electricity costs. This is one reason so many Bitcoin miners are in China, because of the low electricity costs. So here's a company that, they're, once you take into account depreciation, uh, they are probably not earning any money on their mining. The unbelievable thing, though, is that if you take a look at, so if they have revenue of $6.7 million, cost of that revenue $4.1 million, and so that's just sort of the, the, the direct cost, which includes rent, utilities, obviously utilities being the electricity cost of the miners. Then their SG&A, their selling general and administrative expenses, which is basically all the human bodies that, that sit in their headquarters and uh, maybe play poker, play, spend a lot of time playing online poker. They're spending $8 million on uh, their advertising and their salaries, et cetera. So here's something that is, is much higher than uh, either bringing in in mining revenue. This is one reason the company, you wouldn't expect a Bitcoin miner, especially one run by people like this, who seem to have a fairly shady history. You wouldn't expect it to make a lot of money, especially if its operations are based in the US, which is not a great place for cryptocurrency mining, simply because of the higher labor costs and the higher electricity costs. But here's a company that manages to um, pay people, still pay them very well. And it looks like the, uh, so SG&A was 8 million. Stock-based compensation increased by approximately 2.4 million. So they, they increased their, uh, this is probably uh, stock stock options 
of, of the kind that we saw um, Jason less dumping. And so they, they increased, even though they're still not, they're still losing money, they increased their uh, stock compensation for the board and the executives. It's the kind of company that's not really set up to make money. It's set up more as a honeypot for the people who work there and for the board of directors. And so if you're buying this, it's one thing to buy it as a trade. It's another thing, if you think this is a good long-term investment, uh, you would have to be very bullish on their venture investments, their, their, um, their portfolio investments like TestPay and Verity. I looked up their, um, I looked these up and it looks like they're very small investments, especially compared to the market cap. Now, obviously a small investment can become a big investment if the company does well, um, but it looks like this is a little bit scammy. Uh, all test smart contracts would be funded and paid for with tests. USD minute tokens. It's another sort of token uh, token play where they issue these these funny money tokens, and uh, it's more of a uh, looks like more of an ICO sort of situation than a real business that's going to compete with Square and PayPal and these larger companies. So what I would say with this company, if you're bullish on Bitcoin or if you're bullish on Litecoin or whatever the coin is, you should own the underlying cryptocurrency. This is a very um, adjacent play to actual Bitcoin. Bitcoin mining itself is not a great business to be in. Mining anything is not a great business simply because there's a tendency for the mining costs to catch up to the revenues you're making by selling the stuff that you mine, whether it's Bitcoin or gold. And so it's fairly cyclical. It's very competitive. It's very industrialized and it's very commoditized. And so miners in general are not, uh, not good businesses. When you combine it with all the red flags of Riot Blockchain, where they uh, are paying themselves very well. They have a history of changing their name. They have a history of changing uh, CEOs every couple of years. And they also have a history of bad in investments that have uh, impairments and write downs. The one reason to invest in something like this is just to play the flows from naive investors who say, well, Bitcoin's going up. I guess Riot should go up. I can't figure out how to buy Bitcoin. That's a little more complicated. So I'll just buy Riot in my brokerage account. This is a risky play. I can't tell you that it will stop going up here, but it's probably, uh, you know, it could it could spike up to in this in the crazy markets of 2020. It could spike much much higher before it eventually crumbles. But I wouldn't. I I can't see anything fundamental that has changed at this company. It's a pretty scammy looking company. It's a money losing operation. Not very impressed with the insiders. If you found this video helpful, I'd encourage you to check out my financial statement analysis course. If you want to learn how to read an income statement, how to read a cash flow statement, and do some of the things we were doing in this video, this is a great place to start. And you don't have to pay for a business school education to learn it. In addition, if you join Trader University Premium, you'll get access to all of my courses, which includes my Momentum Stock Secrets course, a day trading course, my flagship course for people who are just getting started trading, learn to trade stocks like a pro where you learn everything from A to Z that will make you into a good trader, how to make money with IPOs, uh, the list of my favorite current momentum stocks that I'm trading, et cetera. There are like 15 courses here, swing trading with options and uh, price action trading. Anything you can imagine in the markets is covered here. If this is something that interests you, you can scroll down, you can click in the link in the description notes below. It'll take you to this course page and then you can click on any of these uh, any of these blocks and that will take you to the course and you can check out the list of lectures and see what's covered. If you're interested in joining, scroll all the way down to the bottom here and click get it now, which will take you to this checkout page. Now normally access to all 15 courses is just $125 for 30 days access, but I want to give you a special discount code, coupon code since you've watched this long. If you scroll down here and click have a coupon code and type in capital YT as in YouTube, 99, and then click update. That'll take, uh, that'll take uh, $26 off the price of a one month, 30 day membership. So you'll pay just $99, get access to all of the different courses, including that course on financial statement analysis, my course on uh, learn to trade stocks like a pro and all the other courses. So you can watch all of them cancel before 30 days is up and you won't be charged again. There are no long-term contracts or anything like that. 
I appreciate you watching this video. If you found it helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.